I'll give you the quick background on the book and the cliff notes for everybody who hasn't read it yet. Walter Isaacson, the guy that wrote it, is like maybe the best biographer in history. He was the editor-in-chief of Time Magazine, he was the CEO of CNN for a while, and then he went on to write biographies about Einstein and Da Vinci and you know even modern people like Steve Jobs. Elon's the first person that was still living that he's done a you know active biography about. He literally followed Elon for two years just to see what this guy eats, what his relationships are like, what his family life is like. I mean, he's up to 11 fucking kids now at yeah, this point. Yeah, that's always an interesting part of his story. Walter really did an amazing job of keeping like, like a good outside perspective view on it. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Trifecta Podcast. Today we're gonna talk about human development. Uh, some awesome things have hit recently. One with Elon Musk's biography coming out with Walter Isaacson. Everybody from Lex Friedman to Joe Rogan's interviewing Walter and Elon, really getting a deep dive into what it's like to be the world's richest man who's making maybe the biggest impact on the planet right now, and he's still alive and only 52 years old. Uh, and we can talk through human development, which is obviously something you're uh, an expert at, you know, majored in in college and, you know, dove into super deep dive with Team Alpha Male and all the training that you guys have done. Uh, and then we can talk about X Uncensored, which is, you know. <laughs> it's wild, dude. It's Get like, caught up seeing some heads fly off people's shoulders. Yeah, um, it's, these days. It's, it's like the Wild West out there. So, uh, so yeah, to kick things off, uh, you know, our, our mutual friend Tyler recommended the Elon book to me. Uh, I've already ripped through it. It's 615 pages. Damn, really? First off, ripping through something 615 pages sounds like that would take me a whole year. <laughs> I can, I literally can read, like, can be, try to be completely focused, start reading something, get sidetracked and then be like, go have to read it again. I'll be saying the words and not contemplating. Screw it, screw it, screw it. I'm glad that I have the cliff notes from you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot, but that's a whole year's work for me. Uh, How long I'll, did it take you? I'll, I'll give you a deep dive on it, maybe two weeks, yeah, to get through oh it. Oh my but, gosh. But it was, it was like the type of book that like you get so into it because you're yeah. seeing like the insides of Elon's world that I was like reading it until, you know, 2 a.m. at night type thing. Uh, just because I didn't want to put it down, so yeah, you know. I mean, what I like about the guy, and I, I want to hear more about the book. Obviously, is, I mean, he's as true as it gets. Mm -hmm. Like he puts his shit out there. He's like, you know, says exactly what he's feeling. He's not afraid of anyone. You know, he he doesn't. His money is so beyond what other people will think about him that uh, he just does whatever the fuck he wants. No, oh, hundred percent, and he's. I think he's having to go through with Twitter that's now X, you know, some sort of rationalization around that, that even his brother Kimball and a bunch of other people are like, bro, you actually have to watch what you say now because you're running a business that's dependent on advertisers. <laughs> and I yeah. don't think he necessarily wants to do that. I mean, everybody saw the Disney interview last week where he, you know, he's like, fuck you, Bob, to like Bob Iger. <laughs> If, so, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. Is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Because Disney's been like pulling their advertising dollars ah. from X, so. So yeah, I mean, the, the, I'll give you the quick background on the book and the cliff notes for everybody who hasn't read it yet. Uh, Walter Isaacson, the guy that wrote it, is like maybe the best biographer in history. He was the editor-in-chief of Time Magazine, he was the CEO of CNN for a while, and then he went on to write biographies about Einstein and Da Vinci and you know even modern people like Steve Jobs. But yeah. Elon's the first person that was still living that he's done a you know active biography about and he literally followed Elon for two years just to see what this guy eats, what his relationships are like, what his family life is like. I mean, he's up to 11 fucking kids now at yeah, this point. Yeah, that's always an interesting part of his story. Yeah, 11 kids by four different women. Uh, you know, he's he's got all kinds of stuff going on and uh, you know, Walter really did an amazing job of keeping like a, like a good outside perspective view on it. But so you know, Elon 
invited him, let him, let him do that. Yeah, I mean, he, he obviously asked and was like, hey, yeah. you know, can I write a, a deep dive biography yeah, yeah. on you? And it's the best advertising Elon could ever get because now he's like alongside these other geniuses yeah. like, you know, Da Vinci and Einstein type shit. But um, starts with his like childhood, South Africa, you know, he's getting his ass beat all the time. You know, it's, he grew up in South Africa when apartheid was happening. Yeah, South was, Africa is kind of gangster. I mean, it's supposed to be like one of the most beautiful places on the it planet. Is, it's like it is, yeah. ocean, mountains, and, and like- All the animals. Like yeah, the yeah. animals. Wine but, country. But it's yeah. also like dangerous and there's mm -hmm. like, like huge separations in class so it's like if you're you know the white rich guy you've got a bunch of people that work for you mm -hmm. take care of your house and but it's like and bj penn someone like that i only want to be known as the best ever is that too much to ask bj penn is without a doubt one of the greatest pound for pound fighters in the world no and the very best lightweight champion ever he was kind of like came from a wealthy family but was in hilo mm -hmm where it's like, it doesn't matter. You got money and you're in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. You just have better food and better training yep. to, to be in the ghetto. So that's interesting. I'm, but his dad was kind of a tyrant. Yeah, his parents divorced when he was super young, which, you know, we, we'll talk about human development a little bit, but he, uh, when they broke up, his dad was kind of a crazy dude. He's like brilliantly smart like Elon. He was like materials engineer, yeah. all this stuff, like ran some <laughs> semi-successful companies, uh, ended up being broke. He's like, Elon pays him like a couple grand a month for him to survive at this point. So, huh. you know, Elon didn't inherit shit. He literally yeah. just came over to Canada with nothing. But, you know, they still, they talk a lot in the book about how his dad was like, reaming him like when he got his ass beat so bad one time he was in the hospital for a week and he really? came home and his dad was like taking the side of the guy that beat his ass and like you know oh i thought you meant his dad beat his ass no i don't think his dad like his dad was like psychologically oh, okay, okay, okay. you know brutal to him i don't okay. know if his dad ever actually kicked his ass but oh he was like just fighting in the community yeah yeah he was just fighting oh, in good the community for him. yeah so it was uh he went to <laughs> One of like those Velt schools, which are like like these all boys schools in South Africa. So he was getting his ass kicked uh, all the time there. And he seems like a real smart ass. Well, he, <laughs> I mean, you would actually probably appreciate this. He, he learned to like, if he, you know, even if he knew he was gonna get his ass beat, if he like punched the other guy right in the yeah. face, right at the beginning <laughs> of the fight, at least they would know he would fight back and he wouldn't get like, you know, robbed or picked on or whatever by those particular group of guys, yeah. uh, you know, as much in the future. So good strategy. Yeah. So long story short, he comes over to the U.S., starts Zip2, then PayPal, then, you know, SpaceX and Tesla. And uh, the guy, he's just on a whole different level of overdrive. And I think that is partially driven by what we were talking about a few minutes ago, which is, you know, he had a traumatic childhood. And, you know, I don't know if he's ever fully going to grow out of that. Like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that, the first three years of your life are you're learning 90 something percent of what you'll learn your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that sounds like a lot. But if you if you factor in walking, talking, balance, um, language. relationships, language, yeah. there's so much that happens in the first three years of your life. Like that is like stamped in you. And mm -hmm. I mean, therapy, like real introspection, like real work, you spend some real time, you know, getting to what, what the problem is fine, but that's like, an, that's imprinted on you. That's like, that's, that's like your, uh, like the building blocks for your, for your mm -hmm. life. So, and, and then, you know, all the way so your brain's fully developed. Yeah, which is what, like? 27. 27, yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's weed can uh, uh, can can affect your brain. Dr alcohol, trauma, uh, you know, good experiences, bad sexual experiences, like mm -hmm. all that stuff is helping develop your brain until twenty seven. That's crazy. Trip. Yeah, is that like is that <laughs> one of the main? Because I know you were a human development major at, at UC Davis. Is yeah. that one of the main themes of? you know like walk like me study. through what that major is you know so, what I mean? so it seems like such an abstract thing to study you it's know basically I mean? <laughs> everything about humans from before birth 
till death and it's like covering how people cope with death mm -hmm. like the 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 brain development like at and this is really good for parents if, and we're both in the in the trenches now with parenting and loving it obviously so fun super fun I'm, I'm dead but it's like at what age can you discipline your child for something they can or can't understand like mm -hmm. at two they don't have a concept of this type of of problem that you're having with them so why are you getting mad at them versus just like taking the scissors or what you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you have uh everything from um like my favorite classes at, at school were anthropology like cultural anthropology where you learned about like the dynamic between families and like uh my favorite paper that i that i wrote was was looking at two different cultures a greek community that had an average uh age of of a female having their first kid at i think 31 the survival rate was like 99.9 percent mm -hmm. um the family dynamic in the community was you were all farmers and when there was a, a people coming together you got an exchange of goods like a cow with the land or whatever and a woman had to be strong and work the land and then in a in a a, a native mayan community where the average age of the first child was like 13. They had uh, like a like a maybe a 40 to 60 percent survival rate of their kids. The average amount of kids they had was like 14. The Jesus. family dynamic was everybody lives in the same house. It was like aunt, uncle, grandpa, grandma, cousins, siblings are all in one house, and they all kind of community raises the kids. Marriage wasn't as as strong because you didn't need to have mm -hmm. the family unit. It was like, you just live in your house with the rest of your family. Mm -hmm. So like looking at everything from like why people are the way they are, why communities are the way they are, mm -hmm. just humans. And the basic, when you're saying the big themes, it always comes down to nature versus nurture. That's like the mm -hmm. big thing. Is it, are you born with this? Is it part of your community? Is it part of your cult, environment? You know, where your yeah. environment? Mm -hmm. Like that's always the big thing. And the, the real answer is it's both, mm -hmm. but it's a trip. Some of the stuff that's, that is like genetic. Mm -hmm. And even this is, this is, I've got Dustin Ekbari, who's one of my top instructors and one of the first founding members of our team. He's an identical twin mm -hmm. from Iran originally. Um, and, uh, and I knew them. we both started training at the same time. Dustin went all in on jujitsu, MMA, has been like he's made that in his life and his brother went into computer programming and whatnot mm -hmm. and to see the two of them the difference is crazy even dustin has a full head of hair and his brother is bald so i mean dustin it, dustin's time is coming but his brother <laughs> like hasn't been kicking in the testosterone hasn't been in that environment and mm -hmm. his hair went away like 10 to 12 years before his brother That's so crazy. there's a lot of kind of stuff like that that you're looking at when it comes to human development and uh you know, a lot of people go into teaching and whatnot. So mm -hmm. everything's interesting. I'm always like, what's the why? What's the why, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's, well, that's like one of the big things I extracted out of this book. Because I'm, I'm obviously, obviously Elon's done some controversial stuff. Yeah. People love him or hate him. But I'm, you know, I'm somebody who's a big fan of what he's yeah. done for the species. Like he... He yeah, definitely, for the species, that's an important thing. Yeah, you know what I mean, he, he, I mean, he's thinking super macro level, and yeah, he can be an asshole to employees or you know certain people sometimes, maybe a reporter or whatever yeah. it is. But like watching his development throughout this book, like step by step, you you really understand how his brain like formed to develop him into really the ultimate entrepreneur, like. Like one of the, I don't know if most people thought this was a profound thing, but I thought this was super fucking profound. So when he was 17, he focused on learning three things to become like the ultimate human. He focused on learning physics, so huh. he would understand like first principles of everything, like how the, you know, what's this wall made of? Why right. does this pen fall when you <clears throat> drop it? Like, you know, all of that type of stuff. Really the, the first principles of how the world works. He studied engineering, so he would understand, you know, software, robotics, you know, all kinds of stuff, really how the mechanics of how everything works. Yeah. And then he knew he would end up working for a business person if he didn't understand, like, 
if he was really good at physics and engineering, yeah. but didn't understand gonna business and job. economics, yeah. he was going <laughs> to end up with a job and he wasn't going to be able to do any great shit. So he also studied business and economics. Yeah. And like by the time he was eight, he had read the entire encyclopedia twice. And, Damn. you know, this is back when encyclopedias were a thing, you know, yeah. he's in his early 50s. And people like started thinking he was a genius because he had acquired so much knowledge at an early stage. And he, by the time he was 17, he designed his life around those three things so he could become the ultimate entrepreneur, you know, because he goes into a problem and he's like, they're like building a rocket, for example. And he'll be like, okay, why does this part cost $2,000? You know, and they're like, oh, well, you know, this is the way we've always done yeah. it. We source it from this company and da, da, da. And he's like, well, how much does the aluminum for that part cost? And they're like, well, I don't know. And he's like, well, I know it costs 20 bucks. So we should be able to make that part for like $75. Yeah. And that's how he made electric cars so cheap, how he made rockets so cheap. And he just, he approaches things from like a first principle standpoint that, you know, from a human development standpoint, I, I don't think, I mean, most people listening to this podcast probably aren't even familiar with what first principles are, but I don't think most people really break down the world that way. Yeah. You know, like he's. You know, it's a trip because two things, first off, one, I saw this clip, in, and uh, actually my mom sent it to me, and it's talking about genius. They did a study in the 60s to figure out the word genius, basically, and how do you determine mm -hmm. what it is. And it comes down to problem solving. Mm -hmm. And they took uh, a bunch of kids from age two, and they followed them all the way through their life to do like the genius study. Mm -hmm. And it one point i think at like three or four like 80 percent of the kids would be considered genius and as they got older they were learning how not to be geniuses yes by the time you get to adulthood you're like it was a very minute minute few that had had the, the right genetics the right environment to keep them as a genius mm -hmm. which is a trip to think about because I mean, it's probably different for everyone. Every person's different. But when you think about that, that like you start out as a genius, you don't fuck it up. You get to be a genius as an adult, <laughs> but everybody's going to fuck it up. Yeah, you know yeah what I mean? because I, I mean, people, <laughs> people don't, uh, there's, there's a book I always quote uh, by Carol DeWick. It's called yeah. uh, Growth Mindset. People, they, oh, yeah. they talk about this concept a lot. They, people don't realize that IQ uh, was developed in France to like track your growth and IQ over time. Like it's not like you were born with an IQ of yeah. 140 and that's what you have, you know, for the rest of your life. Like like Elon, the more shit you learn, the higher your IQ becomes, yeah. you know. And, you know, people like Elon or Einstein or whoever it is, you know, obviously they have some intrinsic, you know, genetic capability, but right. they also or environment. Yeah. I mean, sometimes something clicks where you I mean, who knows? Because you, they've showed all these different studies. Also, like, like even like a plant, like this plant's dying a little bit. They did a study with music. It's doing great. <laughs> it's doing all right. You're like half, half the cup's half full. But yeah. yeah. But uh, like they did a study back in the day where they would take plants and they played like classical music and they played like death metal and the classical music plants just from the energy and the whatever was Sound thrived waves, and yeah. didn't. But. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of things that may or may not be the key factor, and you can't always put your, your finger on what it is. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you said right off the bat, you said something about Elon, I'm a fan of what he's done for the species, for mm -hmm. mankind, mm -hmm. and um, that's something that's interesting because, I mean, really there are people that are making huge impacts for mankind, so they have awards for that, the humans, etc. And then there's the altruism, which is like your human instinct mm -hmm. to help people out. Are you familiar with altruism? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Altruism is basically how much you'll risk your life for somebody else. Heroes, like firemen are, mm -hmm. are super high altruistic. You know, police officers, like that's mm -hmm. a profession that's altruistic. Yep. But we're talking about a guy like this. He's actually, you know, some people might see him as like, selfish or, or just on his own kick, but he's doing great things for mankind. Uh, and it's, it's usually genetically related. Like, mm -hmm. and they, you even talk about race, like, oh, you're not born racist. 
Mm -hmm. right? You're not born racist, but you're born with identifying mm -hmm. what is similar to you, mm -hmm. and they'll show like an identical twin that shows that, that shares 100% of the same genes are way more likely to be altruistic and risk their own life to save that genetic code that's the exact same as them. Mm -hmm. Like they'll go to bat, like they'll be fighting tooth and nail, mm -hmm. jump in the river, try to swim the guy out. The further you get from that genetic code, that similarity, the mm -hmm. less altruistic people are inherently. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a trip in itself. Like brother, sister, mm -hmm. you're gonna go to bat. You're gonna kill for Unless yeah, it's yeah. too dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> then you might just save yourself. <laughs> d depending on your, you know, environment like and everything else like this. <laughs> and it goes, and, th and then also on that same note, like, like parenting, mm -hmm. animals, gorillas, they'll smash a female's baby mm -hmm. to get her to ovulate again mm -hmm. if it's not their baby. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even their own, mm -hmm. you know, because they're animals right now. But like mm -hmm. if, it, so like stepdads can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even in the humans, a stepdad at, at times have, have killed the human unknowingly, it's just a human instinct thing, mm -hmm. right? But then you take into factors like, you know, the stepdad is gonna have kids with the mom who now has another kid that's gonna help out with that kid. There's all these things that are environmental that, that different variables, people aren't, the yeah. different variables that people aren't thinking about, like the altruism thing, like we gotta save even Zuckerberg and, mm -hmm. and these guys are at war with each other, but they're also doing amazing things for mankind mm -hmm. and they're like different sides of the spectrum. But it's a trip to think about the altruistic side of things and like there are people out there that are doing like huge things that other people can't do. Yeah, you know? I mean. And then you break it down to the real animalistic thing like, well, I fight you for another person, you know? Yeah, and I mean, him thinking at the species level, like they interview some of his employees that you know, no longer work there. And they're like, yeah, he, you know, he, it was obvious to me that I was like a cog in the machine of getting us to be a multi-planetary species, but that's because he is thinking at the species level. You know, it's, it's hard to be thinking at like the humankind level, but then you're like, oh, well, we may not get to Mars because I'm worried about Steve's feelings on this project. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like that, that is something that can slow you down yeah. in business, you know, or in life in general is, you know, caring. He looks at empathy as a weakness. Whereas yeah. most, like I must read hundred management books, like most management training or leadership training, like is like, oh, empathize with the person, see things from their point of view, et cetera. Yeah. And he's, he's like, I can get so much more stuff done if Without I'm empathy. just, you know, not worried about empathy and I'm not worried about Steve's feelings, yeah. I'm like, Steve, you're gonna get this fucking done or I'm gonna find somebody who's gonna do it. You got Ooh. a month or you're fired. You know what I mean? Somebody who I feel like is on the opposite side of that spectrum. Have you read uh, Branson's book? Yep, Branson is on the opposite He's side. He's on the spectrum. complete opposite side. Like yep. somebody like stole from the company, he still gave him his job. Mm -hmm. Like he's on the opposite side he's of things. So super empathizes. Yeah, he yeah, super yeah. empathizes and it's worked for him. So I mean, mm -hmm. there's differences, but uh, yeah, it's a trip. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a way for everybody. Yeah, it's it's wild how big he's become because of it. But, but yeah, I mean, that the fact that he's got 11 kids, I mean, you and I are both parents now. Yeah. You know, I got a two year old, you got a- what Three is and it? four. Three and, three and four. Yeah. Um, like they're at that highly formative stage. And I think you think about human development a lot more when you You're have young kids. Humans. Yeah, like you yeah. really feel super responsible for like how you respond when they break something or yeah. like what they're eating. Like, you know, we obviously talk a lot about food with Trifecta. Like we skipped, we went straight from like breastfeeding to, to adult food. Yeah. We skipped baby food, we skipped kids menus, all of that. We just like leapfrogged his ass yeah. to adult food. And now he'll eat, you know, sushi, burritos, Thai food, whatever it is. And we try, I mean, we feed this kid like, you know, superhuman diet. Yeah, and he yeah. went from 10th percentile when he was born to now he's like 99th percentile, you know, almost three years old. But like, you really like get deep dive into you know, how you're developing a human when you become a parent. Like it's yeah. something fundamentally different than 
I thought through, and for you know, my last point on that, like for Elon, he with his eleven kids, he got super down on like the school system, and he started developing like his own school. Which yeah, I've been now, looking into that too. He's now spun out. You can't you can't get your kid into it until I think sixth grade or something right now, but it's all about like physics and engineering and entrepreneurship and like you know yeah. changing the world mindset because I think his oldest are are you know in their early 20s now so, really yeah, yeah yeah so in that book does it talk a lot about his th theory and parenting or was he hands-on he had four different moms so is he in a good relationship because a good relationship with the kids have a good relationship with their mom mm -hmm. is huge for mm -hmm. kids it's huge dad's also somebody in general also that cares about you grandma grandpa uncles whoever it is teacher is important but like the mom in particular is super important i well, wonder what his does he talk any about that like they, the they the do mom? they they go through each of his imagine they're it, caked out so yeah. that helps That's weird. <laughs> each of his wives yes obviously he's oh, does he have, you know does he, he have four wives or does he have no he okay. his first wife was justine they were married for you know okay. seven eight years uh then he married the english act actress i forget her name tia or something twice and then after that, he never got married again. But he was with Grimes, and then he had two kids through IVF with one of his employees who was just going to do IVF. And uh. she was like, can I do IVF with your sperm? So he said yes. And he actually, I mean, this is a crazy story. He was in a hospital in Austin having three kids by two different women at the same time. This is some Jerry Springer shit. Interesting. One was through IVF for twins. The other was a surrogate for Grimes having their secret second baby. So Wait, he's what? I, ultimately, I think they, his last two kids with Grimes were. He's had three kids with Grimes, and the last two were both through a surrogate. Uh. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think for him, he's just trying to have as many kids as he possibly can. He again, again, like. Well, no, he's not trying to have as many kids as he pop possibly can. He's trying to have as many kids as he possibly can. Like, I've tried not to have as many kids as I possibly can. If I didn't try, I would have a shit ton of kids. Yeah, that's fair. He, <laughs> right? he, could, he could probably have like, he's try, he he could could probably have like 500 kids Hundreds of thousands of kids by now if he was really, that was the goal. And he's smart enough to figure that out. Yeah, no, you're totally right. But he, I think he wants to, he wants a relationship want, yeah, with yeah. his kids, which is part yeah, of what he wants to help yeah. have a healthy Yes. So abundance of children. Yes. So, you know, would I say he's like like a like you and I both like are very loving and kissing on our kids and hugging them and doting and yeah. you know, I don't think he's that type of father. I yeah. think he's much more um like he wants to be around the kids, yeah. but like the he wants Asperger's to be aspect yeah. of it, like he's Is not he Asperger's hundred like, percent? Yeah, he's he I mean he's diagnosed himself and you know yeah. like autism is like a big spectrum. Yeah. So I think he's like obviously extremely high functioning like one of the smartest people on earth but yeah but he also he has, has some... trouble with like social relationships a little right, bit right a little bit I mean? yeah yeah so so his favorite seem at least currently seems to be his kid x which obviously you know <laughs> x.com you know spacex all this shit is x uh who's i think like three now and he just brings that kid with him everywhere yeah he's like you know, accepting Man of the Year award and you know, <laughs> the fucking kids like right there. He flies That's his jet funny. all over the place and the kids always with him type thing. So, so, so. Uh, that, and this is we talk about like, I mean, real genius and highly functional in one area. Mm -hmm. um, yet to be known how the fathering is going going to go for him at the end of the day. Also health, you know, mm -hmm. that's a big thing for us at Trifecta is yep. like, what do you put in your body? And you were telling me that story about he was with Ari Emanuel and Ari's, and I know Ari, Ari was a Yeah, so give people wrestler. the backstory on who Ari is. Yeah. So Ari Emanuel, if, if anybody's seen Ari Gold. Any chase. Ari Gold. An entourage, that is Ari Emanuel. That's he's a, he's a real guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. And he's an awesome guy. Yeah. And he's also maybe high function. He, he's at least ADD. He's <laughs> like, he used to be next to him and he's looking everywhere. He's been here to SAC. He's been to the gym. His son was an aspiring uh, mixed martial artist for a bit, and so he came and trained, and, and uh, I've been to his house, and that guy has a million things going on at one time. So Ari Emanuel is the most powerful agent in 
the world. world I he would he argue. owns yeah. William Morris Endeavor, which is now um, just called Endeavor. Yeah. Yeah, which is now yeah, it's it which owns WWE. Not sure whether he wins or not, Lesnar is always the axe. The UFC. The one, the only, the notorious Conor McGregor. Works with almost, I would say, you know, the large majority of, of the biggest stars in, in the world. Top Hollywood talent, There's yeah. CAA and there's William Morris Endeavor. Those are the two, Endeavor. Um, so, yeah, and he was also a wrestler, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a wrestler. And um, so he's in tip-top shape as it is, right? He's yeah, so they, they did have that picture in the book, which, you know, Jay, you can put it up uh, on the screen, but... It's him at Ari's uh, wedding in there in the south of France on, on a yacht. And Ari's like, you know, hosing Elon off at the end of the boat. And Ari's <laughs> just like tan and jacked with a six pack and Elon's, no, you know, not little, in the- he's, Little he's, fluffy. It's, it's, a, it's a bad angle for him, we'll put it that <laughs> way. And, you know, from that, he actually started uh, intermittent fasting, which is obviously still super popular diet. Yeah, uh, he does it with what I would consider absolutely shit macros. So he's eating like he eats once a day, every day at 11 a.m. And he usually like gorges himself at that point to get all his calories for the day in. But he's eating stuff like, you know, they talk about people bringing him boxes of donuts and all kinds <laughs> of shit like that. So I don't think he's going for longevity in the way you and I would. Yeah. Where we're like, hey, I want to live to 100 in this body. Well, I think he's trying to like put his brain into a robot and <laughs> yeah, have longevity that brain. way. Yeah. I mean, there's health and there's weight. Mm -hmm. It's one thing. Losing weight's simple. Mm -hmm. You eat less calories than you're bringing in, you're going to lose weight. Yep. Um, you're going to get smaller. Health is a whole different animal. Yep. That's you know, the quality of the foods, the vitamins, the minerals, the this, that. The macros, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of unhealthy people that are skinny and there's a lot yeah. of healthy people that are heavy and vice versa, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's maybe not, he needs to think about that possibly. Well, he can really do whatever he wants. He's probably got a, he's probably got a little robot. He's already got something figured out. Well, I mean, that's, that is one of the businesses is Neuralink. So they're, they're obviously trying to figure out that human robot connection and, in the book, they talk about it very altruistically, like, yeah. uh, you know, they're going to help people with spinal cord injuries uh, be able to walk again or use their hands or whatever. Um, but you got to think in the back of his mind, part of it is like, I want to fucking live yeah, forever. Yeah, having a good time here. And, you know. I got 11 kids to see. Yeah. I want to see, you know. He, he wants to. 200 I'm sure, kids. I'm sure he wants to put his brain into a robot, uh, which, you know, is, is definitely one of the, the huge possibilities. But. Um, yeah, what a trip that would be. I mean, why not, right? That, did I already hear they're, they're now able to clone a human, right? Yeah, they can clone a human. I mean, human. it's illegal in, I think, practically every country, but yeah. um, technically we're capable of it. I mean, we can clone pigs and horses and all that kinds of other trip. shit. Yeah, so they're now putting chips into pig and sheep brains, and they can have, like, they, they had a monkey in the book that was playing, like, video games just with its brain. Like, it's like watching the screen. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. And controlling yeah. the different stuff just with a chip that's in its brain. So, that's wild, dude. You know, it's, it's not to the point where they can like download Wikipedia into your head yet, which is, I think, another thing that he's definitely after. But um, like the, the amount of advancement that they've started making since he's taken on that problem with Neuralink is is massive you know and it's crazy that we're animals like all these other animals mm -hmm. i mean and then we're we're doing some crazy shit bro i know can you imagine well, <laughs> we're like this dude is like he's launching more rockets than like the entire rest of the world combined this one guy with spacex it's 80 percent. what's of the status of spacex right now what Oh, it's worth $100 billion. It's massive. It's and the goal is? Get us to multi-planetary species. So build a, a base on Mars in case like an asteroid hits us or, yeah. I mean, recently with 
everything going on with, with AI, you know, that's his other big fear is oh, yeah. he thinks <coughs> Google is probably the biggest AI threat. He got in a big fight with uh, Sergey, the Sergey Brin, one of the co-founders of Google at a uh -huh. party in Napa, like right near here. And Sergey was like, oh, AI is not going to be a big problem. What are you, a speciesist, bro? Like he was like trying to defend that like it would be cool if robots had like voting rights and all of that type of shit. And Elon was like, what, what? the fuck, bro? He was serious or they just he joking was, around He was philosophy? serious. Like they're no longer friends because of it. Fuck you! And that's why Elon launched OpenAI with Sam Altman was to really take on Google because he tried to buy DeepMind and Google bought DeepMind to launch their AI program. And he literally, <laughs> like Google, you know it's gonna be Google that fucking kills us all because their motto is do no evil. So they're for sure gonna yeah. be a company that like- Oh, the irony. Yeah, releases the Terminators on us. <laughs> but no, he's, he's literally like actually terrified of that. And- Dude, I mean, I can see it. It's, it, is, it is a trip. I mean, already like, I mean, you can go to so many things for AI. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's and that's why you want to write a speech. I mean, even in the last you know a couple of weeks or so, uh, Sam Altman got—I'm sure you heard about that too—got fired from OpenAI and uh, by his board because uh, something happened. Like everybody's worried about artificial general intelligence, yeah. and they think like the rumors in NorCal are that. Uh, uh, that OpenAI started learning math. Like it, it learned like basic, cause it can do like have a conversation with you. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like chat GPT can, but it's really good at like guessing the next word, you know, from the models, but it's not really good at doing math. And math is the foundation of like science, you know, a million yeah. different things. So they're like, man, if this thing learns math, they have a program, I forget what it's called, like QSTAR or something, and they're like, okay, if the machines learn math, then they're gonna understand like science and all this other stuff, and we're gonna be really close to, you know, what, what they call artificial general intelligence. So like a true AI that can think at the same level one of us can think. And that's what they're worried about, is like once we hit that point, it's going to become yeah. self-aware and it's going to like start advancing itself so fast that eventually yeah. we'll be like advanced pets. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm definitely going to be a cat. Can you You'll imagine be a that? Dog. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they want to put me in a breeding area. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have to choose, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine if you're there just to like watch stuff? <laughs> no, dude, you hope you get picked for like a good pet role. I'm sure you'd rather like... What kind of pet would you be? I'm sure you'd, you'd be, rather... You'd be greeting people. Nice to meet you. you get, hair's always nice. I'm sure you'd rather be in a breeding area than anything else, but um, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. What kind of pet would I want to be? Let me, th I'll, let me think about that, actually. But, yeah, no, I mean, like all the AI stuff has made me think about human development more than ever, too, oh you know? God. It's like, what does it, what does it take to be, you know, like self-aware in a human? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're. Can you imagine Star Wars with three CPO holding uh, Job of the Hut on a chain? <laughs> oh, three <laughs> C three PO. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, R two D two just running the shit. But yeah, no, I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a crazy real problem. So yeah, no, I I hey. highly recommend the book. You know the. I'll give you like the deep dive cliff notes when we're you know, <laughs> after the podcast, but, but yeah, ultimately he's done phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And he's just in this like panic race to get us to Mars as fast as possible while simultaneously greening all technology, you know, like electric houses, cars, batteries, et cetera. And fighting off AI, like that's literally So AI like, for him in his book, I mean, it talks about fears and everything else. Mm -hmm. Those are the two big concerns is something the, happening to the, planet Earth. The three big, yeah. We kill ourselves or an asteroid hits us or something. We kill ourselves through climate change or we kill ourselves through AI. Huh. And like in a YouTube video, somebody like stumps them. They're like, well, if AI takes over the world, they're like, won't AI pretty quickly get to Mars and then kill the people on Mars? And he's like, 
fuck. <laughs> he's like, they probably will. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to think, like, even if we have a second, you know, he's trying to get his what goal. Would be, what would be AI's motivation to get rid of us? Well, I mean, that's, that's really the question. That's is, the question. Yeah. Like, do we, we need to come up with, like, a friendly AI that isn't motivated to kill us? Like, why do humans kill, kill each, each other? Each other yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, the thing is, humans' basic instincts, I mean, if you want to take religion out of it, mm -hmm. their basic purpose is procreation mm -hmm. to make sure that we continue to survive. Like, yep. that's what they think everything is. It's like, you know, it's procreation is the like the big instinctual thing yeah is to continue to have more humans so um if we don't serve a purpose for them anymore to build them then that would be we they don't need us for procreation that would make sense yeah so uh, yeah we don't need robots for procreation yeah well i mean that's uh <laughs> and it, it's also like uh like when Columbus showed up to the U.S., uh, you know, type thing, and just started wiping out the natives. Like suddenly, yeah. if if AI is like, wow, we could do so much on this planet, but we have these fucking humans everywhere with, yeah. you know, fucking yeah, we gotta up. clean up. They gotta, they gotta wipe yeah. their butts. Useless humans. Yeah, they gotta <laughs> <laughs> they're they're dropping bombs on each other. Like yeah. there's eight billion of them now. You know what I mean? Like it's it's I don't know. That's the general fear, but. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. He's, he's read a lot of like Asimov and other stuff that's like really like put the fear of God into him on, on fucking AI. So, so yeah, but no, crazy, crazy book to read on human development. Um, you know, the, I guess the other questions I, I had for you that are tied more to like what you do at Team Alpha Male with yeah. all you've learned at human, uh, you know, <clears throat> human development is like, you take someone like Elon, obviously he's got this incredible winning mindset. He didn't, he didn't take the money he made from Zip2 and PayPal and go lay on a beach. He just like keeps trying to go to the next level. Like, like you, you obviously were like a four-time defending champion. What kept you wanting to stay in the fight game to become, you know, run a team, become a coach? you know, all of that, was it, uh, it, you know, you wanted to leave a legacy, like give us, give us a download on that. I think, you know, and this goes into a lot of stuff, they say like, like a lot of times people retire mm -hmm. and then they die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like when you're looking at like older folks, they like, once they don't have the purpose or the regimen's different, it's unfamiliar, it's like, okay, like then they peter off. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, creating a regimen of being extremely busy is something that I started from a very young age. And then also uh, like wanting to continue to have the same like lifestyle mm -hmm. is important to me where you get to hang out with your friends, you know, have fitness, make my own time. And now with kids, it's all about, you know, I can, I can bring my kids to work mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm the boss there. And, and, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and you're still in the game. I mean, shit. Yeah. Like I, I used to go to UFC fights with you and you're sitting, you know, ringside. Yeah, you're yeah. in VIP. You're, you know, going to the after parties that UFC is hosting. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so for me, I, I want to be able to continue the same life that I've had. And, and I actually enjoy the mentorship side of things. Like, like right now in the gym, I'm so excited about the next generation of guys. Mm -hmm. I've got... Um, you know, these kids from, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids that are coming here from all over the world to be a part of the environment that we built and everything. And so mm -hmm. that for me is, is cool. It's exciting. And, and I can spot them. It's like a game that recognized game, mm -hmm. right? And the, and the biggest thing we talk about, like what you're looking for in, in fighters and individuals is the mindset. So we're talking mm -hmm. about, um, you know, being able to spot somebody that you think can have a long career, can can believe in themselves, can mm -hmm. if they're if they're lacking in confidence, can they through regimen, you know, build that confidence? If they're lacking in muscle, can they can they, you know, follow a program and and get to where they need to be? Technically, fill in the blanks here. I like I like all those little pieces of the puzzle, and it's really when it when it comes down to it, and you know, we're we're business partners on things and and uh and friends 
but at the end of the day, uh, what, what I'm really good at, I'm pretty good at business. I'm okay at business. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, pretty good at some things, but I'm really good at this mixed martial arts thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where my passion took me. And so, um, I'm an expert, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a real expert in Global this one expert. thing. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and now my team <clears throat> has always been a passion project. It's always been something I put money into and built something around like what I would love to do. But now I'm seeing kind of the fruits of the labor with that between mm -hmm. having gyms and I have now the management with the, with, with the, with the team. I have the new thing I'm doing with Sac State, which is the first ever combat university and and I've got some other really big things that I'm working on that I can't talk about right now that are going to be next level for myself and for the sport and and, and mm -hmm. do things that like are going to kind of transcend uh, what I've done and, and and be bigger than than you know what's happening right now and the sports changing like mm -hmm. I, I sat down with Dana not that long ago and he was like let me just tell you, this is probably about a year and a half ago. He goes, let me just tell you, keep doing what you're doing. Keep building mm -hmm. your MMA, little MMA empire. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm blowing this sport up. We're going, I'm going big with this thing in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And he said that a year and a half ago and things keep getting bigger. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, they keep getting bigger. And so it's, it's going to be the biggest sport in the world. Yeah, and yeah. it's got to be because it's the only global league mm -hmm. that's got, that's got like, a, mo a monopoly really I mm -hmm. mean it's it's a global league like there's different American football there's you know there's all these different things that mm -hmm. that are not global this is as yeah, identifiable like the NFL, yeah. NBA, it's so all for me US, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm staying in the game because I see a future in it mm -hmm. and uh, it's not time to to sit back on my laurels it's like this thing is going now I've got my my robot business it's mm -hmm. the AI of 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 our sport, it's mm -hmm. the first ever uh, like jujitsu robot. Jujitsu yeah. robot. It senses when you can, what type of choke you're doing. You can dislocate its limbs. It, That's you know, so has all this crazy. Stuff. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Um, I've got you know some land development I'm working on, and I got my fight promotion. I've got mm -hmm. the gym. So for me, I'm just I like to be busy. It's something I'm an expert in, and uh, and I get to help people. So. Um, yeah, that, that that's kind of the the gist of what I'm doing. And, why I keep it going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and also, um, it allows me to spend a lot of time with my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 right there, three minutes from the gym. Yep, and I own day. the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I think there is something to that that like, like having a lot of success. Uh, you know, ultimately, if you if you just go lay on a beach, you just start to deteriorate. You yeah. know, like you got to you got to do something. You got to have. How many some friends have we vision. had that have, yes. that have been like sold they the company? They sell their business. They make <laughs> tens of millions of dollars, and then they fucking just start drinking fists of vodka yeah. every day. Yeah, and they're like, you know all right, I mean? got to get back to work. Yeah, they're on the golf course, and they do that. They sometimes they do it for six months or a year, yeah. maybe even a couple years if they're super hardcore. But then they're yeah. like, uh, think I'm becoming an alcoholic or this or that, yeah. or, you know, whatever. I need a purpose or a yeah, they or they need a vision for their life that yeah. is bigger than anything they've done before. And I, th I think that's one of the things, going back to Elon, that he's done better than anybody is he's like, I'm going to set a vision that's so fucking massive yeah. that it's like can transform the species. And he, he literally in his speeches will be like, like someone will be like, well, I don't know if we can get this, you know, rocket engine updated in time, yeah. you know, and he's on the fucking phone with them and he's like, the future of mankind <laughs> depends on you, Steve. Like, don't fuck uh. this up. Da, da, da. Like he's that serious with people about his vision, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, I completely agree. Like I'll, you know, I sometimes get in debates with my wife because she's yeah. like, well, when, you know blah, 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 if, you know, we sell trifecta, you can take some time off, and in my head, I'm like, I'm never gonna stop, you <laughs> yeah. know? Like, There's no I, stopping. I, yeah, I'll just keep going for, Tyler's you know. a good example, our buddy Tyler's a good mm -hmm. example of that. He's like, like, what's your update about? We tell our updates about stuff, and he's like, well, I'm just hungrier. I want more. I don't know if I have a problem. But I want more, 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 more. Yeah. This is grinding, you know? Well, it just keep, it gives him a purpose, which is huge, so. Yeah. So yeah, I guess like one, so with all that being said, like one main tip you would give 
maybe one of these 18 year olds joining the program of like how they develop that winning mindset. Because yeah. obviously you've had people come through <clears throat> Team Alpha Male that have one big shit, but yeah. then they get distracted, they get yeah. too into the fame, and then they end up, you know, fucking off their career. Like, you know, like, you know like, I had a, I had a good um, conversation with Lorenzo Fertitta and Dana White when they knew before I did what they were gonna do in my career. Because mm -hmm. they had a game plan for it. They saw me as someone they could plug into their system mm -hmm. uh, because I, you know, was winning fights because I had a unique look and personality, whatever it was. But they were like, hey, look, <clears throat> don't go drop all your friends. Don't do this. Like, keep your core, you know, life similar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they did a good job of that, you know, mm -hmm. with, their, with their core families. And then understand that it's going to be hard. I would tell these kids, like, look, it's not gonna be hard, it's not gonna be perfect, uh, it's gonna be very difficult, you gotta stay the course, and you gotta separate the vision with all the crappy stuff. Mm -hmm. You gotta always go back to the vision and the thought, what am I thinking big about? Mm -hmm. That's what you gotta focus on. When, when everything else is tough, no money, you know, getting beat up, injury, recovery, this and that, Remember what you're shooting for. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a championship, whether that's a house for your mom, whether that's this and that, um, you gotta figure out your why. Yeah, give them and, the why. Yeah, and, the, and I always go back to, uh, you know, the two big things is definiteness of purpose and uh, a PMA, positive mental mm -hmm. attitude. Those two yeah. things are like paramount. What am I shooting for? and try to find a positive twist. Yep, yeah, yeah, no, we we try and do the same thing on the trifecta side when people people will call in and they'll be like, oh, you know, blah, blah, my I didn't get my broccoli in time this week or whatever it is, you know, yeah. with their food. And we're like, okay, well, what was your why? Like, are you gonna give up on your weight loss goal or getting abs yeah. or getting rid of your type two diabetes? because you know you you didn't your broccoli wasn't perfect this week you yeah. know what i mean like that's how, what you're going to throw the yeah, talent like for that. like it's always about i love that like going back to the why with the yeah. you know the way you're doing this for yep, yep. And, and with trifecta not only is it good healthy food mm -hmm. but it's also time time is the most important shit on this planet yep we get and that's what you even know elon even the elon's same trying to get yep. yeah it's like Yep. You know, everyone has the same same amount of time. Like, you can't go back in time. You can't make more time. It's like, it's just there and it's ticking. Uh, that's what I like about Trifecta is, you know, food's ready, grab it. Boom. I'm not wasting time. It's like, <laughs> you know, I can focus on, on, the, on the shit that's going to make my life better. Yep, so, yep, yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Um, okay, last question for you. How do you stay humble when you like how did you stay humble when you were a champion and like what what advice are you giving these guys now i mean i know to stay humble. You, you said like going back to their why is important for them like developing <clears throat> a winning mindset like, right like how do you keep stay like, grounded yeah like uh, i would use sage as a good example and i think he learned a lot of that from his parents oh, you yeah. know type thing but that kid is fucking lethally dangerous yeah. and good looking and young but he's super humble. Like, yeah. how, how do you like coach that into people at, at Alpha Male? Well, Sage has great parents that, that taught him that. And I mean, I can learn a lot from Sage. That guy is a, a positivity, like, he just exudes positivity. But <clears throat> for, for everyone that, that comes in, um, when it comes to like the, uh, the humble side of things, it's, it's first off, um, you know, understanding that, that in, in our sport, it's easy to stay humble because you can have the 17-year-old kid that can come knock you off your, uh, off your stool. But what I say, in, like not getting taken away from distractions, staying humble, is remember when you become somebody that people are trying to get time from, that everybody's gonna look for the easiest way for them to get your time. Mm -hmm. I told this to Frosty Cortez, who's, who's just uh, turned 18. 
why are people coming to you because you're the cool guy now? And what did it take to get there? Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to be a lot easier for the guy at the club to have cool uh, Frosty Cortez at his table to try to help him get chicks and look look like, you know, help his, his social status. Mm -hmm. um, but if he wants to hang out with you, get his ass in the gym, mm -hmm. right? Like, people are going to want your time and your clout and everything else the more you get. Um, so just remember why they want that and what it took to get there. Mm -hmm. And if people want to be in your circle, you bring them to you. You bring them to you. Don't get pulled in this direction and pulled in that direction. I've, I've even been there a couple times where I'm like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what am I doing? And, and, it, and it, it's trying to keep up with the Joneses kind of deal. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, do you and realize, like, the reason that you are in the position you're in is, is because of what you put in to get there. Um, the second thing is just reminding these guys that, uh, you know, we're all people. I, I think when, when you look at, at somebody that didn't have something before, uh, there, there becomes a time where in, in a, a strange mindset, people are like, okay, well, I've outgrown that. Mm -hmm. If it's negative for you, fine, you've outgrown it. If it's positive for you, you got to keep that and you mm -hmm. got to double down on it, mm -hmm. right? People are like, oh, well, now I've got this much money. I should be hanging out with this person. Oh, now I've got this status. I should go here. Now I need to be with other people that are like that. You know, you know Tommy. Tommy's, I've known Tommy since 1993, uh, 1995 maybe. Uh, you know, still helps me in my day to day, mm -hmm. you know, tight with my family. Mm -hmm. um, even if you have to cut out your family sometimes, you know, that, that's a decision people make too. It's like, mm -hmm. if someone's negative, you don't have to cut them out completely, but you can minimize their, their, their place their in, your, in your time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, always, I always remind these guys, like, when it becomes cool to be you, people are gonna want you to go with them. Make mm -hmm. them come to you. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Love it, great yeah. advice. All right, well, appreciate it always, my man. Yeah, Excited yeah. to uh, get this one out there because Elon's book is fire. Highly recommend everybody go read it, even though it is Did 615 it pages. Yeah, they got, okay. they got it on audiobook, Kindle, there we go. everything. So highly recommend. This is another episode of the Trifecta Podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in to learn how to become a better version of yourself. Thanks, guys.